What a wonderful 2013 season for the Oakland A's. Only four teams are in the league championship series. Only two are going to the World Series. And only one is going to win the World Series. So as we A's fans experienced on Thursday, there's going to be disappointment and frustration somewhere in that whole process. And there was a great deal of frustration last week as the A's fall in another Game 5 in the ALDS, this time to the Tigers in the same setting as last season. The A's finished their season at 96-66, and 66, though. That's 30 games over 500, and they won their second consecutive AL West title. And in my 30 years of following A's baseball, as depressing each year gets when they're eliminated in the postseason, I always come back for more. <laughs> Can you relate, A's fans? And I'm back for more right now. And that's why I'm giving you a fix for your A's addiction today. It is Monday, October 14th, 2013. My name is Dale Tafoya, and this is another episode of Athletics Talk Now. We're a podcast and blog that celebrates the past and embraces the future of Oakland A's baseball. This is podcast number 121. And we want to welcome you, A's fans across the globe, listening on YouTube, Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and our website, athleticstalknow.com. On Twitter, you can reach me at at Dale Tafoya. That's at D-A-L-E-T-A-F-O-I-A. And we'd like to welcome you to find us on Facebook. We're at A's Talk Now. And be sure to, to like our page. And on iTunes, search Athletics Talk Now for our archive of over 100 podcasts. And joining me today is one of the greatest A's catchers in franchise history. He was a three-time All-Star. He was the MVP of the 1988 All-Star Game in Cincinnati. He caught two no-hitters, including Dave Stewart's on June 29, 1990 in Toronto. And he hit a homer in his first Major League at bat in late September of 1986. He spent about 14 years in the A's organization since he signed in 1983. He's the great Terry Steinbach. Terry, thanks for talking some A's history with us. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. First off, Terry, the A's, A's fans are still a little depressed about, about about being knocked out in another Game 5 in the ALDS. They're 0-5 in ALDS Game 5 since 2000. Uh, you're the bench coach for the Twins. Tell me about watching the A's this season, and how could one explain being knocked out in the first round, six of the last seven postseason appearances? Uh, help us out here. <laughs> well, you know, I, let's – concentrate on this year i mean i'm more up to snuff on you know what happened this year and stuff and um you know we played oakland late you know in the season just the way our schedule was and uh it was really my first time to really get a good inside look at them and uh they got a very very nice young talented team and you know they definitely deserved you know to to be in the playoffs now you know losing to detroit and I know it's the first round or, you know, game five of the first round again, but I mean, I don't re really think Oakland's anything wrong. It's just that Detroit is, is, is just loaded right now. I mean, with, you know, the pitching staff that they have with the hitters that they have and to watch a young Oakland team, I mean, realistically go head to head with those guys and, and a break here and a break there. And it's Oakland playing Boston right now and not Detroit. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, you're the, you're the bench coach of the twins. How bittersweet was it to to watch from the other side of the dugout, uh, Terry? Your former team clinched the AL, AL West title. They did it at home against the Twins. You know, it, it, it brings back a lot of memories. I mean, yes, as a bench coach, you know, you hate to have anybody clinch against you, and it happened to us twice. You know, uh, Cleveland did it at our park, and Oakland did it at their park. So, mm. um, you know, it, it, it's just one of those things. I mean, being the coaching part, you kind of hate to see that. You don't want, you know, you, you don't want to be part of that. Um, the positive thing on that is hopefully our young players get to see what it's like, you know, to be in contention for a playoff spot, to hopefully some point of their young careers be able to do what uh, Cleveland did at our park and what the A's did at their park, you know, and that is to go ahead and clinch. Uh, you know, the flip side of that now, it, it, it did watching that, you know, or even uh, knowing that there's a countdown happening, brought back a lot of memories. I mean, uh, people were asking me, to, uh, fellow coaches and teammates of mine were asking me, hey, what did you do here? And, you know, you could kind of relive some of those stories of, of, you know, what it's like to clinch and, and, and get to that World Series and even win the World Series. So 
it was it was like you say it was bittersweet. You know, it brought back a lot of fun, positive, great memories that we had in Open. And on the flip side, uh, you know, we kind of kind of don't want to see him clinch against us as a coach. And that that Saturday, um, you guys were in town uh, in late September. There was a it was raining and the, the dugout was full of water. And there was some saying there was sewage in the water and and the national media goes crazy over it. Uh, was it that big a deal? The I guess the uh, the rain and the sewage in the Coliseum when you guys were there. Well, I think the sewage wasn't there when we were there. That was obviously brought to the attention of Major League Baseball and the media. I think a series or two before we got there, um, you know, where they actually had pictures of uh, coaches and players standing on the top step because water was backing up. Whether it was sewage or not, I don't know. You know, because obviously we weren't there at that time. Um, what we saw when we were there was something that doesn't happen either. And that's, I think they got like a half inch of rain in about a two hour period. And, you know, recalling my days from the Bay area, it's just unheard of, you know, at that time of the year to get that kind of rain. And, uh, you know, it rained extremely hard. Uh, you know, water was, you know, running down the steps and everything like, like it's supposed to. Uh, but again, uh, it was neat to see that, um, they could get that field ready to play you know, for us to go ahead and, and, and play that game that day. But we didn't uh, we didn't have any of the, uh, I'm going to call it the sewage problems when we were there. It was just normal rain that, that uh, you know, ran into the steps and hit the drains and, and, and was uh, drained away like it's supposed to be. The voice you're hearing is former A's great catcher Terry Steinbach. Let's talk about your journey in the A's organization, Terry. Uh, the A's have a young all-star caliber third baseman, Josh Donaldson, who was converted from a catcher to third baseman but you took the opposite route and went from third baseman to catcher. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, kind of one of those, I think, similar things. I know uh, uh, Josh is a great hitter. Uh, you know, in his, his early young career, um, he swings that very well. And I think, uh, you know, uh, the his organization is, is, is looking at that and how can we get that bat in the lineup as, as much as we can. And, you know, the seven games that I saw, he's, he's doing very, very well playing third. I mean, he made some fantastic plays, uh, you know, against us. Um, the flip side for me was, you know, I was swinging the bat, but um, they were trying to find a position, you know, for me to play. Um, back then, we had just signed uh, McGuire off the Olympic team, and we had a, a young uh, prospect that they wanted to play first base. So as you project out, uh, how you think the, uh, you know, the three, four year lineup's going to be. It, it kind of looked like, uh, this gentleman named Rob Nelson was supposed to be playing first. Mark McGuire was going to play third, which kind of bumped me out of, uh, you know, third base spot. So they were trying to find a spot. So they said, Hey, if you ever tried catching, uh, you know, let's, let's go ahead and give it a whirl. And you turned out to be a, a pretty good catcher, Terry. And in the early 80s, uh, Terry, the A started building this juggernaut of a minor league system. The A's, of course, produced back-to-back-to-back rookie, <laughs> rookies of the years, the AL Rookie of the Years, and Conseco, McGuire, and Weiss. And in that system, you had key coaches like Grady Fusen, Brad Fisher, Keith Lippin, Carl Keel, and Dennis Rogers. What made that system so succe- successful? You know, it's, it's, it's a great question. Um, you know, now as a coach, um, you sit there and look at, uh, what the the twins are, are are trying to rebuild, you know, and that's a minor league system again, where they can have a good influx of of young talent, you know, readily available for you. So now I think back, what did we do, you know, back then, or what did the coaches do back then? And um, it, you know, to me, it was just a really a situation of of all the coaches. I think were on the same page, and what I mean by that, they were all in uniform with what the A's philosophy and 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 theories were. They were trying to develop players. They were trying to take uh, the talents that each individual player had, and they tried to um, put that player in a situation where he was most likely to succeed. Um, a lot of players did. <clears throat> you know, we had a great influx of young players come up out of those out of that system and have uh, you know nice, reputable major league careers. Uh, and like any organization, there was a lot of people that didn't. So you can't sit here and say that, you know, everything that all those great coaches and scouts that we had uh, in, in the A's back then, you know, never made a mistake or did everything right. They did a lot of things right. They did a lot of good things. But, you know, there's still just the way the, 
the game goes, that, that there's some people that just, uh, for lack of better words, might not be talented enough to make those last couple jumps. And you spent about three years in the minors, Terry. You get a, cop, a cup of coffee in the September call-ups of, of 1986. Were there any key A's veterans that uh, took you under your wing? And what was your first impression of, of Tony La Russa, who had just taken over the team a few months before? Yeah, there was, there was a lot of good people. I mean, you know, in 86, you know, it, when, when you're September call-up, uh, uh, it's normal. So I don't want to portray that, you know, the veterans on the A's were bad. No, they weren't. <laughs> they, they were great veterans. But, you know, it's kind of like, okay, kid, keep your mouth shut and show us what you got. And we'll decide whether we want to talk to you or not, which is normal. Okay, so I'm not, I don't want to be whining about you know, my teammates of 86. But, um, you know, we came up and, and, you know, things went well for me. It, you know, in 86, you know, hit a home run your first at bat. So the, the guys were like, geez, what's this guy all about? And, you know, ended up, you know, playing a little bit and, and helping the team in that short three-week period get some wins. But, um, you know, in 87, my first full year, there was we had a lot of good veteran presence. Probably, you know, the, the major influence that I had, uh, Tarny Lansford, you know, kind of kind of took me, took me under his wing. And, and, I mean, literally, you know, kind of showed me the ropes, you know, on the field, off the field, you know, it was the – very good veteran presence for me and, and a guy that, uh, you know, helped me have the career that I did. And in 1987, as you mentioned, your teammate and roommate at the time, Mark McGuire, goes off, hits 49 bombs, shatters the AL rookie home run record. He ends up winning AL Rookie of the Year, which I think if it wasn't for him, you'd be the AL Rookie of the Year that season in 87. How special was it to watch what Big Mac did and and the A's finish eighty one and eighty one that season? They were starting to turn a corner. It was a lot of fun because everything was starting to tie together. Um, we as young players were getting the understanding of what a a veteran manager Tony La Russa, you know, was all about. Uh, you know, he kind of talked specifically uh, what young players or all players have to do to be in the big leagues. You know and you have to care about what you do and you have to try. And he said, if you do those two things for me, you'll be here a long time. And obviously there's, there's gotta be some production involved in there, but he was, uh, an extremely intense, you know, manager. Um, he was hands on, um, if it was time to get a butt shoe and you got it, if it was time to get a little pat on the back, you got that as well. Uh, he wasn't, you know, uh, afraid to talk about, you know, the veteran guys or to motivate the veteran guys as well as the rookies. So, you know, he had a extremely in, integral part of all, all those years of success that, that, that we had. Um, sitting back and, and watching, you know, Big Mac have the year that he did was great. Uh, you know, I think as a, as a rookie, I mean, it, 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 it took a lot of pressure off me. And again, not that there, there was a ton, but, you know, I had a decent year that year, but when you hit 16 home runs and your teammate hits 49, <laughs> you know, it, it's like, well, who's this guy? But right. um, it was fun because that was the beginning of, you know, the, the group of young people that we had, you know, Conseco, Mac, you know, myself, uh, uh, you know, in the future, Walter Weiss coming up, uh, having that group of young people get, uh, infused with the good veteran leadership that we had, the Carney Lansfords, the Dave Stewart's, you know, the Bobby Welch's, you know, a little later, the addition of Mike Moore, you know, veteran guy, Ricky joining up, Dave Henderson, major, major key player, you know, to those teams with, uh, you know, the knowledge and the advice and, you know, the uh, personality that he had. So um, the A's did, in my opinion, just a tremendous job of, you know, finding the right, veteran, you know, the Don Baylors, the Dave Parkers, you know, the, the right veterans that would um, help motivate, influence, I think, that, that good core of young talent that the A's developed and, and keep everybody going in the right direction. And speaking of that veteran presence, Terry, uh, in that offseason, in the offseason of, of 1987, the A's acquired, as you mentioned, Bob Welch, Dave Parker, Don Baylor, Dave Henderson, Glenn Hubbard, uh, what did that veteran presence bring to the 88 A's who won, who won 104 games that season, 14 game winning streak during that season as well? Yeah. What that brought, I mean, what it brought talent. I mean, these, these guys are all talented players. All right. And, and, and to it, you know, it did, it brought experience, you know, we got Dave Parker, Don Baylor, Bobby Welch, you know, all had postseason experience and, 
and uh, their their key impact players. Um, Glenn Hubbard, probably one of the most in- integral players that I've ever seen. And what I mean by that, from from snatching signs, you know, like a, a, a pitcher's tipping off his pitches because he's flaring his glove when he throws the breaking ball and he squeezes it when he throws the fastball. I mean, Hubby was was the, the best at that. And when you can take all those experiences that the, the, these these great veteran players had, and the key was their 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 personality. They, they were willing to share. So here we got, you know, again, a core of young guys, um, hungry, you know, to learn the game. But now we're getting fed, you know, a, a much higher level of of uh, baseball, you know, is, is being fed to us by guys who have had success with it. So, you know, we could pick and choose from that what stuff applied to us and what didn't. But ultimately, what all these things did was try to make us, you know, individually better players. But if we were better individually, that made our team was better. And that's the thing that Tony stressed a, a, a ton was, you know, about winning. And if everybody's doing their job and everybody's playing up to the level or above the level they're supposed to be at, we got a good chance to win. And that's what everybody in the organization wanted from A ball or rookie ball, you know, all the way up to uh, AAA in the big. The A's were so dominant in, in those in those late 80s, those teams, and so popular. I mean, the A's shattered road attendance records during that time they were the yankees of that time uh what was it like to you know i'm hearing stories of you being rushed behind you know in back doors of hotels just to get in because there were so many there's such a big crowd on the charter bus coming from the airport to the to a hotel on the road no it, it, it was and you have to remember for a good group of us we were young. I mean, that, that that's my second year in the big leagues. First year in the big leagues in 87, second in 88. We're like, w- w- what's this all about? <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, you are correct. Uh, uh, you know, Conseco, Mac, Hindu, Carney. I mean, these guys, Parker, these guys are, are bombing. You know, the Bash brothers was, was formed. Um, the A's had that swag and I think always will have that, 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 that kind of swagger, you, you know, that, that uh, kind of goes with, I think, the Charlie Finley days, you know, going going with the white shoes and, you know, the handlebar mustaches and all that. It, 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 it's kind of the, the same thing the current A's have, uh, have. And, you know, we had that back then. And, and with all that, with winning, with uh, characters, you know, on, on your ball club comes, you know, people wanting to be part of you. So, yeah, those, those are true stories. I mean, you know, you pull up at a hotel and, I mean, there's people everywhere, and it, it might be two in the morning, you know, and, and we just want to get in and get to bed, you know. We just, we just had a game that night and flew in or whatever, so there were instances that, that we would go through the, uh, for lack of better words, the loading dock of the hotel, go through the kitchen, find the service elevator, and get ourselves up, you know, up, up to the room so um, we wouldn't have a, a situation or, or an incident, you know, in, in the hotel lobby at two in the morning, you know, when, when, when you're tired and, and, and want to go to bed and, and someone brought their – you know, six-year-old son who who wants, you know, Big Mac's autograph at 2 a.m. <laughs> and, and, of course, Terry, the A's go on to win the World Se- go to the World Series three years in a row from 1988 to 90. And sand- sandwiched in between those years was 1989 when the A's swept the Giants to win the World Series. But who can forget the earthquake during that series on October 17th, 1989? There's footage where you see A's players and family members scamper on the field and the lasting image of that moment for many was that compelling photo of you consoling your wife in your arms she was crying panicking and i believe that photo made time magazine and even si take us back to those moments when baseball took a back seat to life <laughs> you're absolutely right and, and you know you got to preface this a little bit and i think we mentioned it you know um uh, in, in the, in the interview as, as well, but, you know, my wife was not a, was not, and still is not, you know, a, a big fan of the earthquakes and, and, and people who live around those consistently in the Bay area laugh because 99.9% of them are, are nothing, you know, you, mm-hmm. nothing happens. You, you may or may not feel them, but you know, there's, that there's no damage. So of course, you know, while we're out there, you know, we have the big one and, and, uh, uh, you know, it's just extremely up, upsetting for her. And, the thing you have to remember about that era or, or, or that time for her was that you know, it was all pre-cell phone. And uh, I believe her daughter was two or three at the time. And she was back in Alameda, you know, at a babysitter. And, 
and you know the earthquake hit and and also know what was that and then we're seeing stories of uh you know the marina district on fire and the bay bridge had fallen and the nimitz freeway had you know completely collapsed well all that you know is is pretty close to the coliseum pretty close to alameda you know where, where we had lived and the frustrating thing about that time period is that there was no way uh, for her and us, I, you know, to, to call our babysitter and make sure everything was fine. And, and obviously everything was. So, you know, that was, uh, you know, kind of the, the, the guts of, of, of the whole situation there. But, um, yeah, when, when it, it, when the earthquake hit, um, you know, I think probably everybody on the dugout, you know, just thought that, Hey, that was an earthquake. No big deal. It happens all the time here. It wasn't that bad a one. Um, when, when they get the power on, we'll, we'll go ahead and play this game, you know, probably a little minor delay until the generators kick in or what, what whatever's going to happen. And it wasn't until, um, we're standing there and a person in, in, in the front row had a little black and white TV with a coat hanger stuck in for the antenna hmm. and, you know, obviously battery operated. And all of a sudden, you know, these stories are, you know, starting to come in you know, of, of the devastation and the loss of life and destruction that happened. And it wasn't until that point that, you know, it started thinking, hey, wait a minute, boys, we, you know, we're not going to play this. And this thing is, we think, you know, it's, it's, it's shaping up to be far worse than any one of us had had imagined or, or, or anticipated. So um, it was a, a very interesting time. I think you, you hit the nail on the head when you said, you know, baseball had a standstill, uh, you know, while, while we dealt with this, uh, devastation that that happened, and it was a situation where you know players stood up, came up. Dave Stewart, you know, I think was you know photographed and and was helping as much as he can when when he's from that area. A lot of uh, you know friends and, and and areas that that he was familiar with, um, you know, were were devastated. And I think you know everybody in baseball. I mean, I think it might have helped that it was the Giants that we were playing. And Oakland is compared to, I think, if let's say the Cubs would have beat the Giants that year, mm-hmm. I don't know if you know the same thing would have happened. You know, maybe we hop on a plane and fly to Chicago and and and, and finish the 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 series. Um, but when you have you know two Bay Area teams battling it out, I think you know baseball took a back seat. I think uh, the world you know got to see the devastation that happened, and I think more importantly, the world got to see how uh, communities. Uh, cities, towns, people, how they rebound, you know, from tragedy. And it was a a hundred percent unanimous feeling amongst, you know, both teams and major league baseball that, you know, this world series should be played, uh, you know, as, as a symbol to, to the rest of the world that, you know, yes, there, that there's going to be tragedy and, and stuff, but, you know, life goes on. And and I think it was nothing was, was a better symbol than to have that world series played out. Mm -hmm. And of course, the 1989 A's, uh, with that championship was the A's last World Championship. Um, so, when you remember the, the the World Championship '89 beating the Giants, is it hard to not remember the earthquake? And does that any does that earthquake and and the four game sweep and what you guys had to deal with with the ten day ten day in between ten day, ten days in between game two and four? Does that kind of rob of uh, the the uh, special times of winning that winning that world series you know for for me personally and, and i think yeah, i can speak for for most of my teammates i would say no and the reason that we say no is um losing to the dodgers in 88 you know we felt we had a really good team it was our first taste of uh of world series play um we felt you know, that we were the better team. Obviously, that particular moment, the Dodgers were. You know, so I don't want to take anything away from L.A. They beat us fair and square, and they, they deserved to win that World Series that, that year. But that, that losing that World Series left kind of a bitter taste in, in our mouth. And I remember showing up in spring training in 89, and, man, for the first day of spring training, there was an extremely determined group of players. Um, we felt that we had something uh, to achieve. We felt that you know, we weren't quite done and, and, and that we weren't happy with the outcome of the 88 uh, season, you know, the way the World Series turned out. So I think, uh, you know, for us to, you know, the three goals that Tony would, you know, had set first, you got to, you know, you got to win your division. All right. Once you win your division, then you got to win your league. Once you win your league, then you got to win the World Series. So we, we, we set those goals probably, I don't know, 
early, early in spring training. And I think the players are very determined to do that. So when you set goals like that and we accomplished our first one winning, you know, our, our division, then we accomplished the second one by winning the American League. By the time we got to the, the third part of that, you know, which was beating the Giants, you know, to try trying to win the World Series, there was there was no doubt in our mind that we were going to do that. Mm-hmm. And whether the earthquake had happened or hadn't happened, we felt extremely confident, you know, that that, that was going to happen. So uh, personally, we focus on, you know, that whole journey, actually a two-year journey, you know, starting from 88 and ending in, in, in 89, um, accomplishing, you know, what so many, many athletes try to do, you know, and that, you know, win, win that World Series, it, it, to me, it, it's still a major accomplishment. Now, I don't want to be disrespectful to to the earthquake. Yes, there there was you know tragedy, there was devastation, there was lives lost. Um, but on the flip side, we felt that uh, you know we addressed those humanitarian issues you know as best as the Oakland A's could, as the San Francisco Giants could, and as Major League Baseball could. Um, when those were you know addressed or whatever, then it seemed time that let let's go ahead and finish this thing. So. No, I mean, I still think of 89 as, as number one, winning, you know, the World Series primarily. And then second off, yeah, it was the, it was the World Series that had the earthquake. Final question for Terry Stombuck, and I want to thank him for joining us on Athletic Stock. Now, uh, Terry, during your 10 years with the A's, uh, you also watched late the late owner, Walter A. Haas, sell the club to new ownership in 1995. Describe playing under the Haas family during that time, and and how much do players pay attention to to ownership changes? Well, you know, it, it, it's hard to say how other teams, you know, think about that. Um, our experience uh, playing for the Haas family was was second to none. Um, they were uh, uh, Mr. Haas was hands on. He would come to spring training. Um, very, very kind, gentle man. Uh, I remember Tony would say he would ask if it was okay if you know if he came down to to watch VP, and and Tony's like, this this is your team, you know, obviously, <laughs> you know, you down and and watch. Um, it was fun uh, uh, being part of of that era. Um, I think that ownership, general manager, manager had an extremely uh, uh, great working relationship. And what I mean by that is if Tony felt that, you know, we were a player short, i.e. Ricky Henderson, he could go to Sandy Alderson, GM at the time, and say, Sandy, what do you think? Sandy would say, hey, let me go talk to Mr. Haas. Next thing you know, uh, Mr. Haas and Sandy and, and Tony are having a meeting, and, and if this is what you think it, 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 it takes to get us to, to that final step, let's do it. And it was really a, a fun, good working relationship. And, and you know, like anything, uh, uh, it was sad to end. I mean, I don't think there's a player on those clubs that, you know, um, wanted to see that era of the Haas family owning the A's end. But as, you know, you see in, in, in life, think things are never stay the same. So we tend to really reflect on, on you know, the, the greatness that uh, that whole franchise, that whole organization uh, was committed to. And, and you know, that, that commitment to – you know, to, to put quality players on the field and go out there and win a World Series. And it's really one of those things when you say, you hear the, the phrase used a ton that, hey, our, our, our organization is like a big family. Well, we got to experience that, you know, when, when we were going through, through the era of, of, for the most part, winning, but not all the time. Um, it, it, it was a family. I mean, it, you know, you know, it started from Mr. Haas all, all the way down to, you know, like I said, the, uh, you know, the, Coach, coach, and rookie ball. You want to manage one day, Terry? Um, I'm I'm interested in that. Yeah, I I feel like I got a lot to learn. Um, you know, it was fun getting back in it this year. Uh, you know, and and you see, I distinctly remember, you know, what it was like being a player. You know, showing up at the field and and your charts were done and your game plan was done and and Duncan had how we're going to pitch this guy and you know we had a good. Uh, understanding of who was pitching that day and how how we're going to try to work him. Um, well, then you you finish playing and then you get out of the game for 13 years and you step back into the game on the other side and have a great appreciation for the good coaches that I had because you find out the stuff just doesn't get done. You know, now I'm finding out okay the charts have to be made. There's a lot of deliberation discussion about trying to put that lineup together. Uh, 
this particular hitter might be a better low ball down and in right hand the hitter. We got a sinker ball thrown. I think we should put this guy in and tomorrow we're going to play the other two guys. We've got to keep everybody fresh. And you really find out uh, the intricacies of, of how a major league team, you know, is run and the quickness that decisions have to be made. Um, you know, we could sit on, on our, our couches or, or recliners at home and, oh, we should have done that or we should have done that. And, but when you're actually in the dugout and the manager comes up to you and say, hey, what do you think? Should we pinch hit or not? Mm-hmm. And you got to give an answer right now. And, and you can't just give an answer. You know, you can't just wing it. You know, you got to have some facts to, to, to back that up, such as, hey, this guy's a good down and in uh, hitter, and I think this pitcher's going to throw him sinkers down and in. I think we got a good chance of putting this particular player in a situation where he can succeed. So, um, unfortunate, you know, Gardy's great. Uh, you know, he's, he's been around the game a long time. He's won, you know, hasn't, hasn't won the big game as a manager, but was, you know, a coach when I believe they won at 91. Um, so it's, it's, it's been fun, you know, to sit back and, and, and watch him and, and, and learn from him. So, um, you know, with that said, uh, you know, I just think we, we, we keep playing this out and, and, and just kind of, You'll see how things shake out. Well, I'd love to see you as a manager one day, Terry. That's the great Terry Steinbach. I'm Dale Tafoya. Thanks for listening, A's fans. And Terry, thanks for being a part of so many great memories in A's history. Oh, you're welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank you.